Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday, May 24, here at Crossroads Presbyterian Church. My name is Susan Seitzma-Bratt, and I serve as the pastor here. We are so glad that you have tuned in to join us for worship. If you have pastoral care needs or any sort of uh, prayer requests, please do not hesitate to reach out to Congregational Care Director Kim Steffen or myself. Crossroads stands ready to assist any members. If you need help going shopping for groceries, if you have a loved one in the hospital, or just need a listening ear or prayer, we are here to support you. If you do have a prayer concern or a joy and you would like them listed in our prayer web or for your staff to pray for them, please email prayers at crossroadsprez.org. That is prayers at crossroadsprez.org. A lot of you have been wondering what's happening with Vacation Bible School right now, so let's find out right now. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Sporty, and I'm here to tell you about this year's virtual Vacation Bible School happening at Crossroads Presbyterian Church, June 22nd through the 26th. We have a lot of great things in store for you, and yes, it's going to be virtual, but it's still going to be awesome. We have arts and crafts, we have Bible time, we even have some cool games that you can play at home or anywhere you are. And we have some wonderful Bible verses and songs. It's all going to be there, including me, Sarah Sporty. Let's take a look at what some kids are doing for arts and crafts for virtual vacation Bible school. Here we are, checking in with some kids who are hard at work on today's origami project. What could it be? As you can see, they're folding furiously. They're taking a look at the tutorial that tells them every step of the way. Oh my goodness, I wonder what they're going to create. Whatever it is, it will have to do with the Bible story for the day. I wonder where they get all their good origami skills from. Hmm. Kids, are you having a great time? Looks like it. While these kids are hard at work, let's check in with our friend Wilda and see how things are going at her house. She's doing some great games with the kids there. Wilda, over to you. Thanks, Sarah Sporty. Hey, everybody, it's Wilda Beast here. It's so good to see you all again. So I'm hanging out in this really strange place. It's called a backyard. Have you ever heard of such a thing? So they tell me in backyards, people have a lot of fun playing VBS games. So I thought, hey, maybe I could stumble upon one. Shh, do you hear that? <laughs> Head, shoulders, shoulders, head, <coughs> cup. <Not> head. <laughs> that looked like so much fun. I can't wait to try it. Back to you, Sarah Sporty. Wow, thanks, Wilda. That was great. Those kids did an amazing job with that game. So that's just a small highlight of the great things in store for you during this year's virtual vacation Bible school happening through Crossroads Presbyterian Church. Today is the first day you can register. Don't forget, tell all your friends and family. It's going to be an amazing year. So see you later. Signing off, Sarah Sporty. Thanks, Sarah and Wilda. Registration opens today on our website crossroadsprez.org. We want to congratulate our confirmands who met with session and were received as new members of Crossroads last week, Sunday, May 17. Look for a photo montage of our newest members during the Pentecost service next week, Sunday, May 31st. Also, everyone is encouraged to wear red to virtual worship on Sunday, May 31st as we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost is considered the birthday of the church when the gift of the Holy Spirit came down to uh, the disciples gathered in Jerusalem. 
We'd like for you to send a picture of you wearing red to Todd O'Connor at crossroadsprez.org to include in a photo slideshow to be used on Facebook in the coming weeks. Today's guest, today we have a guest preacher, and his name is the Reverend Landon Whitsett. He's the executive of the Synod of the Midwest. Landon is giving this sermon as a gift to all Presbyterian pastors this week to give us a respite, given the work that we've all put in during this pandemic season. Landon has served as a pastor of a church, as vice moderator of our General Assembly, and now as a leader of our Synod. I'm so thrilled to have him bringing the word today. And finally, our session has been faithfully discerning and working on a phased plan to return to in-person ministry. We've been consulting with the CDC, uh, local public health officials, our insurance company, and the Presbytery. At this point, we are not ready to reopen. In-person worship will remain online, and all of our groups and ministry will continue to meet virtually as they have until further notice. As we continue to finalize the plan, we will communicate the plan and phases in the coming weeks. Please continue to keep our leadership in your prayers as they discern how we can best be church and steward the health of all. Although we worship in different spaces, we worship together in spirit and in truth. And so we join together in our call to worship following the words on the screen. I invite you to please join in our call to worship today following the words from Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. We bow before the Lord Most High who reigns over all creation. Shout to God with songs of joy. We worship the Christ, the exalted one who sits above every ruler and authority. Sing praises to God, sing praises. We bless the Spirit, the hand of God, who lifts us into heavenly courts. Come, let us worship God.
Today, we celebrate Christ's ascension into heaven 40 days after he rose from the grave. Jesus promised to be with us, helping us whenever we fall short of his glory. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin by praying these words together. Dear Lord, you call us to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth, and you clothe us with power from on high. Yet we stand still, our eyes fixed on the heavens, as though Jesus will reappear in the clouds to point the way. We cling to the past, for we find comfort in familiar traditions, even if they no longer serve your purposes. We fear the future, for we cannot imagine a new season of ministry, even though you promise to empower us. Refocus us, O Lord, and fill us with the expectant hope as we step into the future you will bring. Baptize us again with your Spirit and enlighten our hearts to discern your will so that we might embody the fullness of Christ at work in the world. Amen. Hear the good news. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He, he himself, himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all Amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be set free, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free.
that you've done for me. For our time for children today, we're going to be talking about saying goodbye. Imagine a time when you've had to say goodbye. Maybe you've been visiting a friend or a relative, and you've had to end your time. My dad has taught me a lesson where he says, if you're going to say goodbye, or he uses the word exit. He says, when you know you have to exit something or, or someone, you're leaving someone, he always would say, Jenny, make sure you exit well. So let's imagine what it would look like to exit well. Think of um, sitting at the table. You're eating a meal with your family, and perhaps you want to be finished. Now, to exit well, you would scrape up all your crumbs, you would take your dishes to the um, sink, and maybe you would even say, may I be excused? That would be exiting well. Not exiting well were for you to just leave the table and run and play in another room. Not exiting well. Imagine you're visiting your grandparents. And in order to exit well, of course, hugs are given, and you're saying goodbye, and you're saying thank you, you're making sure you've got all your stuff, and then you get in the car and you leave. That's exiting well. Not exiting well would be when your mom says it's time to go, and you just run to the car, and you don't talk at all. We want to make sure we exit well. Well, today, in our scripture, we're going to be looking at a passage where Jesus exits well. Do you remember Christmas? At Christmas time, we celebrated when Jesus came to earth. There were angels, and there were shepherds, and there were wise men. We were very excited about Jesus coming to earth. Well, today's scripture passage talks about when Jesus exits the earth. He leaves. We're going to see how he, has, he leaves well. Because, you know, at Easter, Jesus rises from the dead, and he could have left and gone back to heaven right then. He doesn't, though. The Bible tells us that he spends 40 days here on earth before he goes back to heaven. And in that time, we have read stories with Pastor Susan about how he walks to the town of Emmaus with a couple of disciples, helping them understand what has just happened. We've seen him go into an upper room and help Thomas understand what he has done and why he's done it. All through these 40 days, Jesus is talking with his friends and his disciples, helping them to understand what has happened and what is to come. And so he's here on the side of a mountain with all of his friends, telling them, okay, now it's time for me to leave. Once again, explaining. And then he says, and I promise I'm going to leave you a helper. And next week, we're going to be seeing how that helper, the Holy Spirit, comes. What Jesus said happens, actually happens. And then, Scripture tells us that Jesus goes back to heaven. He says goodbye. He exits well. So as we are going about our week, when we have to do something maybe as simple as leaving the table or something as hard as having to say goodbye to friends, we want to be like Jesus. We want to make sure that we exit well. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Lord Jesus, saying goodbye is sometimes not easy. But we look at your example, and we see how you helped your friends. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to do that, that you would help us to exit well, that we would be able to do as you did. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. And now we want to sing together a song that helps us prepare to hear the word read and proclaimed. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. will 
Friends, before I begin, I want to thank you for welcoming me into your homes and your worship lives today. I and my colleagues at the Synod of Mid-America are so very grateful to all of those across the church who serve as our pastors. For the last two months, they've been working tirelessly on our behalf, seeking to serve us with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, even as their own lives have been turned upside down. And so we're honored to be able to take one thing off their hands this week. And we would ask you to join us in sending them a note of encouragement or thanks for truly being a steadying presence in our lives during this pandemic. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we are not separate from you nor from one another, even though we may act like it. In your forgiving grace, please prick our hearts and illumine our minds that we might hear a word from you this day. Amen. Our selected reading on this Ascension Sunday comes to us from Luke's Gospel. Friends, let's attend to God's word. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. And may God bless our reading and our hearing of these words for how we live our lives. Amen. You know what I hate? Cliffhangers. Always have, always will. I suspect I'm not alone in this. I mean, who likes to be mentally and emotionally tortured? I'm sure there's some 
weirdos out there who like it, but I haven't met one of you yet. But cliffhangers are, I admit, a magnificent way of heightening the tension of a story that you're telling. They tell you what's at stake, and they've been used by writers for generations. I think TV has some of the best cliffhangers, and really, it all started with Dallas, didn't it? For those of you who don't remember, Dallas was a nighttime soap opera of the late 70s and early 80s that focused on the Ewing family and their oil business and their ranch. Well, at the end of the season, uh, season three, the show did something that really hadn't been done much before. In what were literally the final seconds of the episode, one of the lead characters, J.R., was shot. And then the credits rolled. That episode aired at the end of March, and the world had to wait eight months before getting an answer to the then ubiquitous question, who shot JR? Eight months. It was a crafty move on the part of the writers, and every TV show since has followed Dallas's lead and ended their seasons with a cliffhanger in some form or fashion. Now, not all cliffhangers are as dramatic as Dallas's. And in fact, most of them are kind of boring, and that's actually why I don't like them. I'll take J.R. Ewing getting shot. I'll accept the reveal that Lost had shifted from flashbacks to flashforwards. I'll relish Hank realizing Walter White is Heisenberg. But if you don't pull that off, and you leave me with a wimpy, huh, I wonder what's going to happen next, then just stop. Just stop, because you failed at the one job a cliffhanger has, and that's to set up the rest of the story. Our scripture reading today from Luke is the gospel writer setting up the rest of the story. Here's the important thing to know about Luke. It's one of two books written by the same author. Biblical scholars have long told us that the same person who wrote this gospel also wrote the Acts of the Apostles, the story of how the church became the church. There's this interesting thing that Luke says at the beginning of the gospel. He says this, Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. I love this. Basically, Luke tells his friend Theo, okay, after reading everything that everybody else produced about the life and ministry of Jesus, I decided they wrote it wrong. Listen to me, I'm going to set you straight. From the very first moment, Luke has a plan with the story he's telling. He wants to take his friend Theo on a journey, but it's a journey that doesn't stop with Jesus. Interestingly, for Luke, the life and ministry of Jesus serves as a setup for the life and ministry of the church that we read about in Acts. The very verses that we read today are the very last verses of this gospel, and after that, we're into Acts. We're moving on. But like all cliffhangers, this section of the gospel serves its function well by setting up the next scene. Luke tells us that when Jesus showed up there with the disciples, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And what was it that they came to understand? That repentance and forgiveness is to be proclaimed everywhere. This, this is the critical setting up. Jesus going up into the clouds, that's, that's cool, but that's all that it is. Next week on Pentecost, there's, there's a cool thing that happens on that day, right? The tongues of fire. But don't forget that the big thing that went down on that day was a sermon by the Apostle Peter explaining the scriptures to those present, calling for repentance and offering forgiveness. It was this sermon that resulted in 3,000 people becoming a part of the community in one day. And from that day on, 
Oh, from that day on, the people held all things in common. No one was allowed to live in any kind of need. Differences between Jews and Greeks were honored, and they found a way to live together and serve one another and honor one another. Hospitality and welcome became their guiding star. Freedom and liberation and well-being were the church's aim. Those who had been outcasts were no longer looked down on as inferior, but the circle was widened and a new understanding of what it meant to live together in peace and justice was born and it all started when Jesus opened their minds to the scriptures. In one of our confessions, a brief statement of faith, we read this. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people's long silence, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. Friends, if the world we're living in is not a broken and fearful one, then I don't know what is. For the last two weeks, our colleagues in the Office of Public Witness and the Committee on the Self-Development of People and the Office of Racial Equity and Women's Intercultural Ministry have hosted conversations laying bare that the COVID-19 pandemic has had an outsized impact on communities of color. We know there are millions who have lost jobs and as a result, health care and other means uh, to provide for their families. This world we're living in, this world is a broken one right now. And if we're honest, there's, there's a lot to be afraid of. Will I get sick? Will my loved ones get sick? Will I lose my job? Where's my next meal coming from? For a lot of people, this crisis has triggered depression and anxiety that they thought they had dealt with a long time ago. It has been yet one more reason for white privilege and white supremacy to rear its ugly head. This world, this world we're living in, this is a fearful one. And yet our confession says we hold on to the truth that the Spirit gives us courage to do the work. The Spirit we proclaim as the giver and renewer of life gives us the courage to do the work. How? I think it has to do with the last things Jesus said to the disciples before he ascended. He said, you are witnesses to these things. You have seen that God is a good God. We have seen that God is a good God. We have seen that God cares for God's people. It's like the great anthem says, I will sing of God's mercy. Every day, every hour, he gives me power. Siblings in Christ, there is a lot of need right now for repentance and forgiveness. A lot of humanity is not the best version of itself these days. We are more broken and fearful than we'd like to admit. Amen? But we have been witnesses. We've been witnesses. We know who God is. We know that our God cares for us. And we get to be the ones to tell everyone the good news of Christ's grace and peace with our words, and with our actions. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Let us turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we pause to give you thanks for the gift of your Son, for his ascension, for the charge that we have to be your church in mission. We thank you for your faithfulness to us throughout all generations and for your grace. Today we also give thanks for this church, not only Crossroads Presbyterian Church, but all of your churches, your body of Christ spread out around the world. And we pray that we would continue to have unity, to share your love, to show your grace in your world in a new way. Faithful God, we also thank you for the specific gifts here at Crossroads. We thank you for those that are called to serve in ministry in a variety of ways. And we pray that we would continue to serve you with energy, imagination, intelligence, and love. God of love, we lift up our world to you. Where there is fear, where there is struggle and strife, we pray boldly for your peace. Where there is division, we pray for your reconciling, for your unity. Where there is hardship and struggle, we pray for a willingness for those to be your hands and feet to share. We pray for wisdom for all those who are in leadership, whether they are leading here in your church, whether they are elected officials in our town, our city, our state, our nation, and our world. Move them to set aside any vain ambition so that they might work together for the common good. God of healing, we pray today for those who are sick, whether it is in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are suffering, who are struggling, for those who are unemployed or underemployed. We pray extra measures of your peace. And for those who are grieving the deaths of loved ones, we pray for comfort. We pray for them to know your peace, which surpasses all of our human understanding. God of love, thank you for the gift that it is to gather in worship today, to, to be your people, to be reminded of how you come alongside us, of your faithfulness. And now we join with one voice in the prayer your son Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In gratitude, we continue to offer our lives to God. And so in response to God's grace, we now present our tithes and our offerings and our lives in service to God. Thank you for pledging online or for mailing in your checks to Crossroads Presbyterian Church. Sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory, when I'm home where my soul belongs? Was I love when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song? I want to live like that and give it all I have so that everything I say and do points to you. If love is who I am, then this is where I'll stand. Recklessly abandoned, never holding back.
we see the places where your creation groans. May these gifts be a faithful response to those cries. We dedicate them to you in the name of the risen Jesus Christ. Amen. Walk by. 
my faith, this mountain shall be moved. And the power of the gospel shall prevail. For we know in Christ no receive this charge. Go out into God's world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us all. Amen.